Hi everybody, I'm back. And I just thought I'd tell you that, uh, well, I forgot to show everyone when I read the prologue of what the drawing was uh, beside the text. So there's Varna looking at Violet for the first time. And there's Violet looking at her mommy. So I'm gonna turn this over now and begin to read the start of the book. And it goes like so. Violet's tiny wings flutter as she swirls through the air toward her fairy mother. Mommy, I saw the campers in Algonquin playing with their stuffed animals today. The campers pretended the animals were alive and they moved them around on the floor and they talked in funny voices. Varna's green eyes crinkle into a smile as she watches Violet fluttering above. That must have been very special, Violet. Did anyone see you? Humans believe that fairies don't exist. Well, at least most humans. Violet glides down to Varna and hovers close to face her. Oh, I was real careful, Mommy. The screen door was open and I just flew to the rafters when no one could see me. Well, okay. I'm glad you had a good time, Violet. I know there are no other fairy friends for you other than the dragonflies you play with from time to time. But you just gave me a great idea. I believe I have a spell from the magic book that may be able to make stuffed animals come alive. That would be amazing, Mommy. Varna snaps her fingers. Okay, my little fairy, let me try to find the spell. Varna adjusts a green sash around her lavender tunic pants. And she strides across the room. The billowing sleeves of her white shirt are speckled with golden glitter and her long red braid braid swings as she strides even further across the room. The magic book is set upon a tall wooden pedestal in a side chamber of Varna's underground tree home. An ember lantern casts a yellow halo on its mossy green cover. Varna flips the pages to the section she was sure held the transformation spell. Her eyes squint in concentration as she scans the ancient writings. A short while later, she looks at Violet with a triumphant smile. Aha, I found the spell. The major ingredient comes from crater rocks we found on Echo Island. Violet's fairy wings turn brighter in color as she flies around the room shouting, good work, mommy. Can we start now? Varna laughs at Violet's acrobatic circles and replies, not tonight, Violet. I still have to gather the ingredients for the spell. The crater rocks have to be dried and ground into a fine golden dust. I can have everything ready in three days. In the meantime, you can plan the animals' activities. And I'll do a little closer look at this one so everybody can see it. I think you can see it now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> On to the next page. A few days pass. The evening shadows fall and the moon rises, casting its golden glow across the rippling waters of Echo Lake. Let's wait until it's dark when the kids are all sound asleep, Violet. Varna carefully pours the magic crater dust into a pouch and ties it to her green sash. She winks and smiles at Violet. Hop on, my darling. It's time to start the fun. The screen door creaks as Varna and Violet enter the cabin called Algonquin. There are 10 nine-year-old campers asleep, including the girls' counselors. Varna whispers, we do not want to wake everybody up when the stuffed animals come alive. They have to stay in a slumber, and I have a little slumber spell that I can spread in the air to keep them asleep. Varna pours some slumber dust onto the palm of her hand and slightly tosses it about the room. Varna slowly recites the spell. And the spell is written here, but I shall not repeat it here. It's okay not to whisper anymore, Violet. No one can hear. Help me choose each girl's favorite stuffed animal and we'll lay them in a circle on the floor. When they wake up, you can select who will be tonight's animal leader. Violet's purple and green wings glow brighter. Gosh, thank you, Mommy. After the animals are in place on the cabin floor, 
Juana opens a soft pouch of the awake dust and sprinkles it on the animals as she chants another spell. This one is the transformation spell. A beautiful cloud with colors of the rainbow encircles the animals as the magic takes effect. Suddenly, the stuffed animals move their limbs and try to stand. Varna and Violet laugh and clap their hands. Violet flies around the room shouting, Hooray, it worked! Button eyes transform into human eyes. The animals bump into each other as they scurry around, experiencing their real bodies for the very first time. The motions are a bit awkward as they practice their first steps. Varna bends down and waves. Hello. My name is Varna, and this is my little fairy daughter, Violet. Welcome to the real world of humans and fairies. Violet raises her wings in greeting. It's wonderful to meet you all. Varna nods at Violet and continues. We hope you enjoy tonight's activities. You can now walk and talk and understand human language. Violet and I have some fun events for you to play. Oh, and this is the, what it looks like. Here's the stuffed animals coming alive. That's all the magic dust that's going on in the animals. Varna notices a rabbit standing off to the side, his front paws tucked behind his back. Two front teeth stick out in a grin, and his bunny tail wiggles. He is the first of the animals to speak and extends his hand in greeting to Varna. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jeb, jolly efficient bunny. I am very pleased to meet you and Miss Violet. Might I be of assistance tonight? Varna smiles down at Jeb and looks at Violet. Well, my fairy daughter Violet is in charge of assigning a leader. What do you think, Violet? Violet flies down to look into Jeb's eyes. Well, since you were the first to speak tonight, introduce yourself. You will be my choice, Jeb. Jeb nods his head and replies, Thank you very much, Miss Violet. It's an honor to be chosen. Now, what's the plan? Here's... Oops. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. All right, so that's... That's Jeb. Violet explains, you'll be leading your fellow animals in camp activities. We need you to keep things organized and make sure no one wanders away or gets lost. Varna drops a speck of crater dust under the palm of her hand saying, Sprit Sprat, I need a tiny hat. Suddenly a black top hat appears and Varna offers the hat to Jeb who quickly sets it upon his head. You may also need a whistle and a pointer to keep everyone organized. Varna pinches a bit more of the crater dust and recites, Not a thistle, I need a whistle. Poof, a tiny whistle on a string appears. And Violet flies the whistle over to Jeb and places it around his neck. Varna continues with one more spell. Make it quick, I need a stick. Poof, a shiny black cane appears in beside Jeb, who promptly catches in his hand paw and hops upon a chair. He gives a quick twirl of the cane and tips his hat. Thank you, Varna and Violet. I believe I did show you that. Yes, maybe I'll show it to you closer. There it is. Oops, a little glare there. Maybe that's better. Here it is. It's about to begin. You can see how excited they are. Fuzzy Bear shouts, I'm moving and talking. I feel so alive. Molly Monkey jumps up and down and chases her own tail. Billy Bulldog looks up, looks up at Varna and asks, Did you say we get to play ball? Freddy Fox paces back and forth, restless to get started. When can we go outside? Ricky, Rac Ricky Raccoon, Zana Zebra, Kev Kangaroo, Cappy Cat, and Penny Pony also test their new voices. Suddenly a whistle sound pierces the air and everyone looks up at Jeb. Listen up, everybody. We're gonna line up in alphabetical order before we leave. Don't want anyone getting lost. Cappy Cat, you're first in line behind me. Zaina Zebra, you're last in line. Varna nods in approval as the animals figure out where to line up. Only 
Zena Zebra seems upset that she's the last one. Jeb spots her long face. It's okay, Zena. The last one in line is special. You're protecting everyone from behind. Zena proudly raises her head and trots to a spot at the end of the line, lineup. Jeb holds a small clipboard that had been handed to him by Varna and announces the night's activities. First, we'll go water skiing, followed by gymnastics. Baseball comes next. Then we head over to horseback riding. The very last activity will be arts and crafts. Varna nods for approval. Well done, Jeb. I also would like to add one important thing. The spell that keeps you alive only keeps you alive until daybreak. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that spell keeps me. They only have till daybreak, so that can... Ah, I think all the animals were coughing like, you're kidding me. Really? Ah, Jeb takes this as a cue to get started, and he points his cane toward the door. Follow me, everyone, and Varna will be overhead lighting the way for us. No stragglers, please. And follow closely so you will not wander off and get lost. The little critters scamper across the hill, two of the ski docks, which are all aglow with sparkler lights to light up the sky. You can see it's kind of dark in the cabin. This is when they, they're about to leave the cabin, and now they're about to head over to the ski docks. There we go, it's a full moon out there. Jeb excla exclaims, nice touch, Varna, you think of everything. He looks over at the assembled group. First off, everyone put on a life jacket before you get into the boat. Varna has skis that will fit all of us since some of you have four legs. The first to ski will be Cappy. But Cappy refuses to get into the water. Cats don't swim, Jeb. We hate the water and won't go near it. <laughs> Violet flies down to Cappy and says, Cappy, don't worry. The spell that makes you real can also make you swim. Cappy looks deep into Violet's eyes and feels reassured. Well, okay, Violet, I'll give it a try. That's the spirit, Jeb shouts. The ski boat is placed on driverless automatic so the craft can turn in wide, slow circles. Varney helps place a special foot attachment on each animal to safely secure each skier. She nods to Jeb to start, but first I'm going to show you this. This Cappy Cat got the courage to be in the water, got that courage from Violet, who is assisting. She nods to Jeb to start. The ski boat's motor is pure and, pure I should say, and and the animals all, all board the craft. Jeb decides to be driver, while Violet readies herself to throw the ski line to each animal. Cappy is a bit hesitant, but plunges into the lake. Skis first. He balances himself to get into their ready position. Jeb yells, Good job, Cappy. Now raise a front paw if you're ready. Cappy looks scared, but bravely raises his front right paw. The boat lurches forward, with Cappy clutching the ski rope. Finally, he gets his balance. He smiles and shouts, I did it. Next, it was Fuzzy Bear's turn. She raised her leg into the loop of her ski rope and crosses her arms in front of her. Fancy. Violet flies alongside, shouting to Fuzzy. Awesome trick, Fuzzy. After everyone's turn, Jeb blows his whistle for attention. Time to get to the next activity. Line up on the dock. Varna turns on the dock fan to dry their furry bodies. See, Varna thinks of everything, doesn't she? Jeb congratulates everyone and looks at his clipboard. Now, let's get over to the camp's gym. The name of the building is, you're right, Tumbledown. The animals follow Jeb. When they arrive, Tumbledown's lights are brightly lit. The animals enter the building and see a blue brick springboard floor, a balance beam, uneven bars, and even a trampoline. Molly Monkey spots the wall ropes and scampers over to climb. 
Jim blows his whistle. Uh, 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 not so fast, monkey, Molly. Listen to the rules first. Molly is a bit embarrassed and turns back to join the group. Uh, sorry, Jeb. I just couldn't help myself. It's okay, Molly. Thanks for saying you're sorry. Violet flies to Jeb and offers assistance. Thanks, Violet. If anyone looks like they need help, you're welcome to coach. So here they are in the gym. Cappy Cat is first on the balance beam and skillfully walks to the end. He lands with a somersault on his dismount and stands with front paws held high overhead. Jeb exclaims, excellent form, Cappy. Molly Monkey finally gets to climb the rope and reaches the ceiling in seven seconds. She then leaps from the ceiling and lands on the uneven bars, twirling first on the top bar and down to the second. All the animals applaud and want to try it too. Jeb announces, no more rope stunts, but everyone can try out the trampoline. All the animals love bouncing on the trampoline and springboard floor. The hour quickly passes and Jeb blows his whistle for quiet. Y'all did great. Congratulate each other and get ready to follow me to the baseball field. But first, Varna has a surprise for us. Thank you, Jeb, said Varna. Violet and I invite you to our tree home in Vagabondia. It's nearby in the woods behind Tumbledown. Jeb, you will follow me and lead the others. Violet will fly behind Zena. As you know, what it's like at night walking through the forest. It's kind of near where you go to Sunset Circle, isn't it? It's behind there. Well, all oh, it's another full moon. We walk through the enchanted forest of Vagabondia. The branches of the tall pines rustle in the soft night breeze. The loons are all out in full and their songs echo across the lake. The animals listen to this new sound and walk in silence down the path to Vagabondia. They finally come to a stop in front of a tall pine with two tree trunks rising to form a V. Varna touches a branch on the side of the tree and the door appears, Bara lowers her head at the entrance and steps in. Follow me, everyone. So now we're gonna go into Barna's tree home. And it's also Violet's too, Violet lives there too. Oh my goodness gracious. Jeb enters first. Oh, this is lovely. It's warm and cozy in here. The animals follow Jeb into a living room area. Cushions of green, gold, and purple lay on white cane cha chair frames. A bubbling pot of gold cradle rock simmer in a large iron cauldron above a small fire pit. Light reflects in the animal's eyes as they watch the glowing embers. Violet is perched on Barna's shoulders as she turns to the animals. Welcome to our home, everyone. Tonight you will experience the wonderful sense of taste. Each of you will take a graham cracker, marshmallow, and chocolate bar to make a s'more sandwich. Varna demonstrates how it's done while Violet hands a stick and marshmallow to everyone. They form a circle around the embers, their sticks pointing toward the fire. After the brownish color appears, Varna helps them ease the marshmallow from the stick and slide it onto a graham cracker. Violet drops a chocolate square on each marshmallow. Everyone bites into their s'more. Mmm, sounds of yummy. Mm, mm, mm. This is great. This is amazing. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, and delicious. They also said delicious. It all resounds. Everybody loves it as they experience taste for the first time. Whiskers and pars are sticky, and Violet has to fly around with a wet cloth to help them with cleanup. Jeb licks his whiskers and stands to give a cheer. Hip, hip, hooray! Thank you, Varna, for teaching us how to make s'mores. Varna bows to her guests, blowing kisses to everyone. I'm so glad this part of tonight's spell worked. Now we'll leave to follow the same path out of the forest and onto the baseball field. Jeb points his cane toward the door. Let's go, everyone! And now I'm going to pause this because... We are going to have part two, the end of the book, aired on July 16th. So until then, everybody.
Sending loving kisses and hugs from Camp Vega.